to uh, our audience to um, to read your books, uh, Constructive Therapies One, Two, and Three. Uh, I think oh, yes. there is uh, an interview in Constructive Therapies One and Two to uh, see the shadow, and and uh, yeah, those two. And I'm pretty sure there is also an interview to. Uh, see the Shazer and to Insel Kimberg in the other book um, yeah. interview with a um, psychotherapy expert. I love oh, yeah. that book. I love that book. Yeah. I was going to mention yeah, this. Yeah. That. So, um, yeah. last question. Please. I know that there are, as you say, plenty of names be behind Brick psychotherapies who help them to become great and spread in the world. But. Uh -huh. There is one in particular that Michael Hoyt remembers with particular affection. Yes. Bob and Mary Goulding. Oh. Bob and Mary yeah. Goulding. In 1985, I attended the first Evolution of Psychotherapy conference. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. And I remember it well because it snowed the first day. And it never snows in Arizona, but it snowed. It was sort of like... like the gods were sending, you know, this is special. <laughs> so, and that first day when I saw Bob Goulding, I fell in love with Bob. I don't mean romantically, but I just, I connected with him. I, I, and so I got to spend a lot of time with Bob and eventually with his wife, Mary Goulding. Uh, and I took many workshops with them and I went and stayed at their residential, uh, did residential live-in workshops for a couple of weeks, trained a lot with them. Uh, by the way, Jeff Zeig trained with them also. So they, they were very influential in the field. Uh, they had developed something they called re-decision therapy, yeah. which was a combination of TA and Gestalt. In their, like, they had studied with Fritz Perls and they had studied with uh, Eric Byrne. The phrase, I'm okay, you're okay, was Bob Goulding said that first, not Eric Byrne. Oh. But it goes on. But beyond their specific theory, I wrote a note to myself, I think their lasting contributions were several. Number one, they were very, very clear about the importance of getting a clear goal mm for each therapy session, what they called the contract. And they said you can avoid a lot of resistance by having the client specify what the client wants. So we're not imposing on the client, we're serving the client's interest. So one was clear goal. Second, as they said, the power is in the patient. The power is in the patient was the idea that people have autonomy and responsibility and capacity. They have skill they can use. So we don't have to do it for them. We have to assist them in doing it. So that was the second. And the third thing that they did was they often used imagery and gestalt techniques. So they very much brought an experiential component into therapy. The therapy wasn't just an explanation talking about what's wrong, but it was also feeling yourself doing something differently, making it alive and real in the moment. Yeah. So I think that was very, very important. I was also going to mention somebody else who I think has been somewhat overlooked is my friend Michelle Ritterman. Okay. Um, Michelle, okay. Michelle Ritterman uh, wrote a book. She's written several, but using hypnosis and family therapy. Mm -hmm. And Michelle was a, one of the best students of Milton Erickson. She was also a student of Haley, Salvador Mnuchin, uh, and Braulio Montalvo. Uh, and what she did was she brought together some of the ideas of structural therapy, which is looking at it from the outside, the exterior view, and the interior or hip, psychological hypnotherapy. She had the idea that symptoms were trance uh, states brought on by the family or other social forces. When she went and told Erickson about this, Erickson said, that's brilliant. I think you should work on that. I would develop that idea if I were you. Yeah. Uh, it's a really interesting integration of, of structural therapy or strategic therapy and more of the hypnotic kind of work. So she's really good. I also wanted to uh, mention a couple other people very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, these people are already very well known, so they're not overlooked. But I want to give a couple of shout outs, as we call them, you know, praises. One is to Bill O'Hanlon. Uh, there's many good people, but every time Bill talks and I listen, I learn something. And I think Bill has done so much. And Bill started as Erickson's gardener. He worked for Erickson. He wrote all these books about Ericksonian therapy and all these other things. The book on your shelf, the Uncommon Case book, uh, many of Bill's books. 
Bill's terrific. That's one. A second person I wanted to mention was Nick or Nicholas Cummings. Oh, yeah. Dr. Cummings was the president of the American Psychological Association and all. And in addition to his advocating for psychologists and social workers and marriage and family therapists and doing all of that, he was the developer of very large health care systems that were venues for brief therapy. He was a great encourager of brief therapy. He wrote books about brief therapy. He did training in, in different models of brief therapy. So his venues, uh, if you was, were places to learn to do brief therapy, and brief therapy would be appreciated. The third person, we've mentioned him a couple of times already, is Jeff Zeig. And the reason I wanted to particularly mention Jeff uh, is, in addition to his own clinical contributions, I think that his being the uh, Architect, the director of the Erickson Foundation, the architect of the uh, evolution of psychotherapy, the brief therapy, and the couples therapy conferences, has been an enormous gift to our profession. Uh, it's created a place for us to learn about brief therapy, to have exchanges of different models. Uh, so I think uh, Jeff has created a place for brief therapy to, to grow. Uh, Nick uh, Cummings did the same thing in, in, in his own way. And, and, and Bill is just terrific. Uh, I'm sure if you ask me in a couple of hours, I'll think of other people I should. <laughs> I apologize to those people I forgot to, to mention. Uh, but yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, some of the people I've been talking about I did this book, Interviews with Brief Therapy Experts, 2001, and I went around and I interviewed Michael White, Steve DeShazer, John Weekland, uh, Bob Goulding, Ken Gergen, uh, the list goes on and on, Paul Václavic, uh, people, and we did the interviews and then we uh, put a lot of footnotes in to talk more about their theory. This, this was book is sort of my education in brief therapy. This was a really good one. And then last year, this came out, a book of mine, collected papers. And I think it's, it's, it, it's a good book, but it also has a lot of information about the, some of the people I've been talking about and some models of brief therapy. I want to thank you, Flavio, for this opportunity to walk down memory lane and think about the uh, Weekland and the Shazer and, and Erickson and all these people. Thank uh, you. One of, yeah, yeah. One of my jobs right now is I'm getting near the end of my career. You know, I'm, I've been doing a long time. It's not bad. Don't worry. I uh, hope not at the end, but I'm getting near the end. But I think now an important thing is to pass information on. Otherwise, why well, have all these books and know all of this if you don't give it to somebody or use it? So I'm very excited that you're making tapes and interviewing people so that somebody can watch and say, oh, i got to check that out, or I want to learn more about that, or what was that book Michael Hoyt said, or oh, what was the best book about Haley, or where do you get the thing about Erickson? Yeah, so I think this is a really valuable thing we're doing now. Uh, there were two famous Ericksons in psychology. There's Milton Erickson. Yeah. Uh, as we all know. But then there's also Eric Erickson. And Eric Erickson, uh, he's a different person, but Eric Erickson wrote about stages of life. And he said, when you get older, there's generativity to help the younger generation yeah. to pass to pass it on. So this makes me happy to be, uh, I feel like I'm being Ericksonian on both sides. I'm uh, talking about Milton Erickson. <laughs> But Eric Erickson is saying, yes, Eric spelled it E-R-I-K-S-O-N, no C. Yeah. That's the Danish way, with a C is the Norwegian way, apparently. Yeah, but thanks again, and uh, thank I hope this is... Thank you, Michael, for sharing with us all your uh, knowledge, all your exercise. Um, I hope to see you soon in Italy. Uh, actually, we will see in Italy in a month, talking about single session therapy. And I suggest to everybody that will see this interview in the next uh, months uh, on the internet to uh, read your books, attend your workshop, and um, have a talk with you because I think that you can teach a lot to everybody and to enrich everybody with your stories and with your uh, expertise. Thank you, Michael, and see you in the next time. Ciao. Ciao.